Good morning and welcome to The Art of Composition. Thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. So today I want to take a look at another Paul Hassel photograph. I'm a huge fan. My sister will be representing Paul in her gallery sometime in 2021. And I'll let everybody know when you can buy Paul Hassel prints. They're absolutely beautiful. I have one hanging on my wall. But anyway, I want to take a look at this photograph and drop the harmonic armature on it and show the photographer what you can actually do with this. And one thing I've noticed over the past month is that a lot of photographers are using the harmonic armature when they come to my website. They're using it in photography and they're using it correctly. And the reason I sound a little bit surprised at that is because when I first started out teaching dynamic symmetry years ago, photographers never got it. In fact, most artists, they could never get it. I very rarely, if ever, had somebody come back to me and that understood dynamic symmetry just because of the comp, you know, how complex it really is. And I don't use dynamic symmetry anymore in my own photography. I use the harmonic armature because I'm shooting in a 1.5 rectangle and you cannot use a tool that doesn't fit the format that you're shooting within. And Adam Morelli talks about that in his latest B&H video. And I do have a clip of that on my website just to stress the fact that if you're shooting in a 1.5, you can't practically apply dynamic symmetry. It's a waste of time. So I teach the one grid approach. That's the harmonic armature. It has the most flexibility. It's the easiest system to learn. And it will provide the artist and photographer with an infinite amount of variety with only one grid. I think it is the best place to start. I've stressed this heavily through my own experience. And like I said, I use it in my own photography now. I don't use dynamic symmetry anymore. But what I want to do is I want to drop the harmonic armature on this photograph and demonstrate why it matters where you place your subject on a canvas. And I thought this was a good photograph to demonstrate this because you have a lot of a negative space around the subject. And where you place this subject in the frame, it matters. And occasionally I get people, they come back to me and go, well, does it have to be perfect? And I understand the question. It kind of makes sense. It's not about perfection, but it's about creating the best composition you can. I mean, if you think about it logically, you don't want to strive to create bad compositions. And of course, generally speaking, artwork is not perfect, nor should it be. But you, if you can, you should create the best design you can because the stronger the design, the better your work's going to be. Design affects the viewer on a subconscious level. When you're looking at a master work of art, you might not know exactly why it appeals to you, but a lot of that has to do with the design because design affects you on a subconscious level. You might not be aware of it, but it's there. But let me drop the grid on top of this and I'll show you why it matters where you place your subject. All right, here's the photograph with the harmonic armature. As I stated before, it's a one grid approach. You're always using the same 14 lines. It's a repetitive process with an infinite amount of variety, which means you can learn it at a much quicker rate. So if I'm a photographer and I'm shooting a subject, where I place that matters. And I'm going to highlight in yellow how Paul is using the armature to place the subject. So in this photograph, there's a lot of diagonal lines being played out here, and I'm going to highlight those. You have a dominant diagonal line right here. You have this diagonal line framing in this area and this area here. You also have these diagonal lines framing in this leg right here. You have this diagonal line here of the armature locking this arm into place. And I can drive a vertical here, which frames in the bust of the subject, right? You have this horizontal line right here, creates a major division at that point. And you also can drop a horizontal line right here, 
which frames in the top of the head. So again, with just a few diagonal lines, a vertical and a horizontal, I've locked my subject into place. And one question I got to the other day was, do I need to use all the lines? No, you don't. The artist can use a few lines, a lot of lines, a lot of divisions, a few divisions. It's up to the artist to decide how they want to use the armature. You can create very simple designs or you can create more complex designs. I added a painting by Juliet Aristides just to give an example of a complex design in my user's guide. But at the same time, you can create a simpler design when you're starting out. It's a repetitive process, which means you can build upon it slowly. You start out with a few lines, few divisions, and then over time you just build on it. And it makes learning a lot more fun and a lot quicker when it comes to learning this information. Like I said, I'm noticing now that photographers are getting this and they're creating stunning designs. And I want to create, I'm going to create an organization for photographers that are classically trained. And I'm going to present their work and show off their work to demonstrate to other photographers what you can create when you understand design. That's going to be it for today. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it as always.